Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with the Bhagavad Gita series again, and today we are in the 17th verse from the second chapter. Second chapter is very long. <laughs> and today we are going to discuss about the imperishable soul, that which is imperishable. All right, so let us offer our respects to the preceptors who have enlightened us with this divine knowledge. Om Gyanti Mirandasya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Nama. So we'll recite the shloka once and after that we will see the translation and the purport. And before we do that, in the last verse, I'll read out the translation of the last verse so that we are aware of the flow. 16th verse translation, the last video. Those who are seers of the truth have concluded that of the non-existent, that is the material body, there is no endurance, and of the eternal, that is the soul, there is no change. This they have concluded by studying the nature of both. So in that, we saw how the relationship between the part and the whole was stressed and why we are suffering and why we feel that we are we are needing so many things of this material world. Man thinks he needs a wife, uh, wife thinks she needs a husband, then a boy thinks you know, he needs father or mother. Why, why all these things are coming? Because, now of course we need at a intellectual level, we can understand that. But the ultimate answer is because we have lost our connection with the Supreme Whole, the example of the hand I gave. So if the hand wants to be happy, then it has to serve the body, the stomach, and then automatically the hand is happy. All right, so now the 17th verse. Let us recite the shloka. Avinashi tu tad vidhi yena sarvam idam tatam vinasham avyayasya na kaschin na kaschit kartum arhati. Na kastit kartum arahati. Na means <laughs> no. All right, here is the translation. That which pervades the entire body, you should know to be indestructible. No, no one is able to destroy that imperishable soul. That which pervades the entire body, you should know, know to be indestructible. No one is able to destroy that imperishable soul. So what does it mean when it says that which pervades the entire body? So basically, this means the soul which is in the region of the heart. As uh, Krishna says, you know, Ishwara Sarva Bhutana Mridesha Arjuna Tishthati. So the soul is in the region of the heart of the body. Heart is on the left side. And Krishna decides there. And the soul also, which means we ourselves also we reside there. That is why uh, when things give us real pain, then we say, you know, it broke my heart completely. We don't say it broke my hand, it broke my leg, it broke my head. No, we don't say that. Even though we behave so much on an intellectual level. But when it comes to things which are very close to us, we always use the heart. So... What is that which is permeating the entire body? That which pervades the entire body. So the soul is situated in the heart, but the consciousness permeates throughout the body. So that is what Krishna is saying. It is indestructible. No one is able to destroy that imperishable soul. So let us go to the purports. This verse more clearly explains the real nature of the soul, which is spread all over the body. So the consciousness is spread throughout the body. So therefore, although the soul is situated in the heart, but if somebody comes and uh, tries to bite my hand or my leg, then I will feel pain because the consciousness of the soul is permeating through the entire body. So because of that, the soul thinks that this hand is me, this body is me. So whenever the, the hand suffers or the leg suffers, the soul feels that the soul is suffering. And that is why we suffer actually. 
although the hand is dead there is no uh, the the hand if you see if, if you cut somebody's hand and throw it then that's just dead matter nobody is interested in a dead cut hand you never see anybody like a, sometimes in romantic movies they show you know, the man is taking the hand of the girl and you know, he's kissing her. but you will never ever 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 see a man taking the hand the cut hand of a lady and you know kissing it that never you will see why because the moment the hand is not associated with this body it becomes useless totally useless worthless penniless no value the hand is valuable till the time it is in connection with the body this verse more clearly explains the real nature of the soul which is spread all over the body anyone can understand what is spread all over the body it is consciousness there you go everyone is conscious of the pains and pleasures of the body in part or as a whole that means some body part is spinning or the whole body is spinning this spreading of consciousness is will be limited within one's own body that means i cannot feel what is going on in another person's body because in that body my consciousness is not permeating in that body his or her consciousness is permeating so she will know he will know what is going on i cannot know the pains and pleasures of one body are unknown to another because the consciousness is not permeating there therefore each and every body is the embodiment of an individual soul and the symptom of the soul's presence is perceived as individual consciousness this soul is described as one ten thousand part of the upper portion of the hair point in size my god Should i repeat this is a very famous statement from the shweta shvatara upanishad the soul is described as one ten thousand part of the upper portion of the hair point in size that means if you take a single hair one hair you pluck out and then you divide it the top portion of the hair into 10000 parts so imagine that's how tiny the soul is the shweta shvatara upanishad 5.9 confirms this balagra sata bhagyas bhagasya bhagasya <laughs> satadha kalpitasya cha bhago jiva sa vigneya sa chanantaya kalpate wow this is a new shloka i know the statement but this is the first time i am hearing this shloka interesting when the upper the meaning of the, the translation of this shloka is there when the upper point of a hair is divided into 100 parts and again each of such parts is divided into 100 parts so 100 100 10000 each such part is the measurement of the dimension of the spirit soul similarly the same version is stated so this is another shloka from some other scripture where this reference is mentioned the name of the reference is not mentioned but the shloka is mentioned keshagra sata bhagyasya bhagyasya bhagasya means part yes bhag सतामस सदृष्टमक जीव सूक्ष्म स्वरूपो यम सांख्ययति तो हि चितकाना वाव देयर आर इन्यूमरेबल पार्ट्स पार्ट सॉरी देयर आर इन्यूमरेबल पार्टिकल्स ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल एटम्स व्हिच आर मेजर्ड एज 1/10000th ऑफ द अपर पोर्शन ऑफ द हेयर सो टू रेफरेंसेस हैव बीन गिवन हियर therefore the individual particle of the spirit soul is a spiritual atom smaller than the material atoms and such atoms are innumerable this very small spiritual spark is the basic principle of the material body 
and the influence of such a spiritual spark is spread all over the body as the influence of such a spark as the influence of the active principle of some medicine spreads throughout the body so it's like if you take a medicine which is bona fide which is supposed to work then the whole body gets cured so similarly although the soul is very small but it permeates the entire body this current of the spirit soul is felt all over the body as consciousness and this and that is the proof of the presence of the soul any layman can understand that the material body minus consciousness is a dead body and that is the proof of the presence of the soul oh sorry any layman can understand that the material body minus consciousness is a dead body and the consciousness cannot be revived in the body by any means of material administration therefore consciousness is not due to any amount of material combination but to the spirit soul so many times people say consciousness is a product of matter which is totally nonsense because uh, then there's no difference between a man who is living and a man who is dead because uh, if consciousness is the body then i am there today when i am alive maybe tomorrow i am dead but i am still there but then i am not there <laughs> so that i which is there and not there sometimes is consciousness is soul in the mundaka upanishad 3.1.9 the measurement of the atomic spirit soul is further explained eshu nuratma chetasa veda vedaitavyo yasmin prana panchadya samavibisha pranai chittam sarvam ota pragnanam yasmin vishuddhyate vibhyate esha atma vibhavatye esha atma the soul is atomic in size and can be perceived by perfect intelligence this atomic soul is floating in the five kinds of air pran apan vyan saman udyan udan yes so these are the five kinds of air so generally people only know about pran vayu they say pran vayu is gone then the soul leaves the body this atomic soul is floating in five kinds of air pran apan vyan saman and udan is situated within the heart there you go it's mentioned here it's situated within the heart and spreads its influence all over the body of the embedded living entity so the example is given of the king that although the king sits in the center in the capital of a city or a country but he controls the entire country just by sitting there this soul is like that when the soul is purified from the contamination of the five kinds of material air its spiritual influence is exhibited wow this is the meaning of this shloka that we just read when the spirits when the soul is purified from the contamination of the five kinds of material air its spiritual influence is exhibited so that means these five airs you know pran apan vyan saman udam they they are like this contamination around the soul and unless this contamination is there which is very much linked with the desires of the soul till that time we cannot perceive or we cannot exhibit or spiritual influence because it said here when when the soul is purified from these five kinds of air only then the material a spiritual influence is exhibited the hatha yoga system is meant for controlling the five kinds of air encircling the pure soul by different kinds of sitting postures not for any material profit but for liberation of the minor soul from the entanglement of the material atmosphere so nowadays generally the yoga which is you know, like turning your hand and legs and back and all parts of your body which is becoming very famous even in the west that is actually uh, the, that's the actual hatha yoga which is mentioned which is the current version of yoga is a very perverted form of yoga of course it's mentioned here you see 
the hatha yoga system is meant for controlling the five kinds of air encircling the pure soul by different kinds of sitting postures not for any material profit but for liberation of the minute soul from the entanglement of the material atmosphere so the purpose of yoga is to not is not to look attractive or to look sexually attractive and attract members of the opposite sex that's not the purpose of yoga the purpose of yoga is also not to be in the best of health the purpose of yoga is mentioned here not for any material profit but for liberation of the minute soul from the entanglement of the material atmosphere so yoga should be done in a way that it frees us from the material contamination not that we do a lot of yoga and then we appear very attractive and then 10 people come and say oh you are looking great sir madam and then you come further into the entanglement of the material atmosphere and now when i say this people will not like they will say that oh this is nonsense you know i don't know people don't do yoga to uh, look good or you know to impress others no we do it for ourselves you know, we do it for our own pleasure that's all nonsense i know so many people who want to do yoga so that they want to look sexually attractive and uh, so that the opposite sex sees them and you know, then they lose their minds they go crazy totally right so if you make others go crazy like that one day you will go crazy <laughs> because this yoga and hatha yoga or any kind of yoga if it is not used for the right purpose it will totally damage you it will totally destroy you because it is like touching fire so if you are not careful if you don't use fire for the right purpose you know, like i purposefully do yeah. this you know this knife <laughs> so imagine you know, this knife is there this yoga is like this knife you know? so now i have some fruits here you know, which you can cut with this so i have this kiwi beautiful it's very very tasty you can eat this or you can use this to kill somebody murder somebody or just come and rip your <laughs> so do not use yoga to uh, go more into matter and material uh, consciousness use yoga to come out of it and for that you need a bona fide yoga teacher just going on youtube or google and searching you know 10 10 ways to do good yoga will not help you because most of the people who are teaching yoga these days they have most of them and not all of them most of them and in fact the genuine yoga teachers also say this you know that most of them they are not at all aware of the soul like especially here i'm i'm in germany and i know so many people who do yoga and then i go and ask them oh why you do yoga oh it helps us to be fit you know we can do what we want if our body is fit of course so yoga is not meant for fitness or for enjoying like dogs in the streets all right it is meant for self realization i know you don't like to hear that right it pinches you i know but that's the fact and anybody who uses yoga to behave like dogs in streets then they will be destroyed very soon nothing will remain with them it's very unfortunate so the ultimate purpose of yoga is to liberate the minute soul from the entanglement of the material atmosphere so the constitution of the atomic soul is admitted in all vedic literatures and it is also actually felt in the practical experience of any sane man only the insane man can think of this atomic soul as pervading vishnu tattva so this is a very interesting statement which is made here which we will discuss in the next video so but i'll just repeat the statement once the last two statements so the constitution of the atomic body is admitted in all vedic literatures and it is also 
actually felt in the practical experience of any sane man, which means any sane man will agree to the fact that there is consciousness. Only the insane man can think of this atomic soul as all pervading Vishnu Tattva. Why does this say? We will discuss this in the next video. All right. Thank you very much. So in this video, we discuss the power of the soul and the size of the soul and the power of yoga especially. And what happens when we use yoga for the wrong purposes? And what happens when we use yoga for the right purposes? And what happens if we use yoga for wrong purposes? How it damages ourselves. Okay. Thank you very much. And as usual, if you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me regarding any area of your life, you can go to my website down in the description section of my videos to find the link to my website for a consultation with me. Right? God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.